How designer brands keep you poor. This bag right here costs $300,000. This is $300 bag. I've seen the same bag at Target. It's $30. And not because it's lined with diamonds or was owned by the late Queen Elizabeth, but because this is a Birkin bag. If you're not familiar already, the Birkin bag- I don't know what a fucking Birkin bag is. I have no idea. It's an expensive, the expensive bag. Expensive luxury handbag in the world. Jesus. The costs range from eighty five hundred dollars. I mean, it's a nice bag, I guess. I mean, sure, it looks okay, but like, why do you like? This is the thing, bro. Is like, if you have this, like, you gotta put on, bro. What are you in a laboratory? Are you trying to? You doing experiments to find out what the fuck is in COVID? This is a. What's that, a, 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 a crocodile skin bag? Like, what the fuck is this? Mickey, yeah, is this Mickey Mouse looking at this bag? $300,000 a bag, and that's not even considering the purchasing history that you need to establish with Hermes just to be considered able to buy a Birkin bag. Because you can't just walk into an Hermes store and buy a Birkin bag at the register. You have to establish a purchasing history with Hermes, meaning- What the fuck? So you got to give them money so they can let you give them more money. This is actually kind of a smart thing for them to do. The reason why is that way they don't have poor losers running around with their stuff. You don't want to be like Supreme, where like Supreme has these, you know, 90 pound 14 year olds that are wearing extra large shirts, looks like a dress on them. It's like it makes the brand look bad. Same as Rolex and Ferrari? Oh, I don't know about that. I never, I never fucking been to a Rolex. I never been to any of these fucking stores. There was one time I went down to the Domain. The Domain is like the place where fucking uh, uh, rich people go here in Austin. And I had to go down there for some bullshit event. And uh, I went down there for that bullshit event. And I went by, there was like a Gucci store there and, and like all these other places. Like, oh my God. How do you do that? You frequently buy a variety of their other products, like scarves Jesus, and makeup. Jesus, bro, like, what the fuck? My game plan was to, you know, wear a lot of my Hermes items to show that, hey, I'm an Hermes customer, and I'm just not, like, because tons of tourists just come in who have never purchased any Hermes in their life, and the first question I was asked was, do you have an Hermes bag? So I'm wearing my two clips. This is so sad. She's acting like she's trying to get, uh, uh, she's, tr she's trying to apply to go to a GDKP Oldowar raid. She's like, oh, I tried to link them. See, I, I got, uh, I have one light in the darkness on 10 man and, and I, I completed half of the achievements on 25 man. And like, bro, it's like, what are you trying to get into a fucking raid for? This is a, a, a resume. What are you doing? Bracelet, got on my Hermes What's Kelly your belt, score? Hermes CDC belt, my uh, Twilly around my neck. You know, I'm a loyal customer, et cetera, et cetera. Tip one, Matt if you have Hermes, wear Hermes, it helps. Hey, yo, wasn't Hermes the god of trickery? It's like they can put it right in your face and you can't see it. That's herpes? No, no, that's two different things. He was a thief as well. Yeah, didn't he try to steal Apollo's uh, shit? Yeah, he did. Damn, so, like, how is it you put that in the name? They put it right in front of them and they still buy it. That's like opening up a meat store and, and like you're selling cannibal shit and the store is called like fucking Hannibal's Meat. It's like you put it right in front of somebody, they can't see it, that's their problem. Imagine if Dick's Sporting Goods did the same thing Dick's and just Sporting buy a goods. basketball, you also had to buy a kayak golf club and some of Dwayne Johnson's Under Armour line. Go. Be ridiculous. And yet that's the reality of buying a Birkin bag. I would argue- Well, for real though, like that's why it's valuable is because you're buying it and having it is like a status symbol. And so people that are losers buy this stuff so they can feel like they're not losers. It's exclusive. Yeah. If they didn't have this, nobody would give a shit about it. Hermes is relegated. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there it is. Hermes is regarded as the divine trickster about which the Homeric hymn to Hermes offers the most well-known account. Damn, that's crazy. How the fuck do you... Like, they literally put it in the name and people don't want to fucking, like... Oh my god. It's an insecure idiot tax. Yeah, what the fuck? It is the physical epitome of manufactured exclusivity. It's 4,000. 
I know. Down. And there's a waiting list. I assumed. What's so fucking funny to me about this is like you can tell by like the way they're dressed and shit. This movie probably came out in like 1996. So at that time, $4,000 was a lot of money. But now, uh, Four thousand dollars is the starting price. That's like that's the cheapest bag that you can get. Thanks, Brandon. Five years. For a bag? It's not a bag. It's a Birkin. And yet, despite the many hoops and long wait lists that are associated with this bag, people keep flocking to it. They might save money for years just to buy one bag. Which that's, by the that's why that's why they do it is because it's exclusive. If it wasn't exclusive, they wouldn't buy it way you often don't get a say in what kind of color or style of bag you get but if you want a birkin bag you're gonna have to take what they give you so why is this happening what is so magical about this bag obviously the it makes losers feel like they're not losers like it's literally that simple like that's it that it's it's literally that simple there's no other fucking fine print to it that's it Answer is subjective. You could argue it's because the materials they use are super high quality or because it's handmade by artisans. But I think I the answer nice. is yeah. a little more primal than that. We seek social status from what we wear to where we go to school yeah. to the handbags we carry. Ooh. We want to be perceived as high status, especially. Oh, don't we me. Don't we me on this shit. I don't want people to see me as high status and they'll fucking annoy me. One of the worst fucking things is people find out what I do. Oh, now they go, oh, God. Oh, fuck. That's the worst thing. Really higher status than those around us. Designer items like the Birkin bag become this cheat code of sort in our modern consumerist culture. Yeah, Robust that's the thing is it is a cheat code. Because, like, there's any moron can save up a bunch of money to buy something stupid like this. Generational marketing has labeled value, status, wealth, and some indescribable specialness to designer items. Yeah. And those who buy into the marketing messages, Here's the thing. It's like if Versace or fucking uh, Balenciaga, any of these people sent me stuff and it felt good, I would wear it. It's not like I'm against it. I'm just, I, I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on it. If I get it for free, it's the same fucking thing. Sign those same labels to the person owning the designer items. The world of designer brands from Louis Vuitton to Rolex is one where social status is achieved purely through consumption and spending. Yeah. It's a system that can easily keep you poor if you're not careful, which is why I want to dive into this topic. Well, of course of it keeps you poor because the people who care about it are fucking dumb and dumb people make dumb decisions with their fucking money all the time. Like you want to see so you want to find out if somebody is stupid or not. Look at what they spend their money on. That's going to be a really good indicator. Designer brands. Hey, yo, don't make fun of her because she's fat. Who cares if she's fat? Make fun of her because she's buying all that stupid shit. Today's video. Let's talk about how designer brands target the poor instead of the rich, how okay. they prey on our psychology, help destroy the planet, and how rich we could possibly be if we didn't spend money on designer products. By the way, if you're interested in more videos on money, media, society, and intentional living, be sure to subscribe and check out my other video essays. I'm trying to post every other week. The right dangers now. of a stay-at-home girlfriend? I should probably watch that. more like a monthly cadence and my goal with these videos is to share financial education what dangers well one of the dangers is uh i had this happen is they stay at home all day think about what to be mad at you for uh, that's one that's one in, in an interesting accessible way while also encouraging people to reduce consumption for our planet be sure to subscribe and thank you for watching so first things first Designer brands will keep you poor. Emphasis on keep because despite the high prices, these brands are targeting the poor and not the rich. Oh, They're absolutely. Rich people spend all kinds of stupid money on shit all the time. Like, people have, like, a, a private jets and shit like that. That's what rich people really have. It's nuts how much money they spend on this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that poor people buy to impress other poor people. Absolutely. Like, gotcha games? Yeah. Targeting the people who want to look rich. Middle and lower class folks who don't have that much money or savings? That is the bread and butter of designer brands. Mm -hmm. Targeting the poor. Steve Jobs is famous for his black turtleneck look, amongst others. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, we had this guy. Yeah, this is Soda Poppin'. We know him. 
things. Despite his immense wealth, he always kept that same very simple look. No designer logos in sight. And this is the same case for many of the uber rich. Bill and Melinda Gates, Mackenzie Scott, Melanie Perkins, Mark Zuckerberg, Whitney Wolf Heard. These aren't people who are running around in Gucci slides and Versace belts and Louis Vuitton and blazoned outfits. No matter how much I would kill to see Bill Gates dripping in Gucci. That would be funny. Like that one video, that one picture, that AI picture of the Pope with like that vest and like all that other shit on. That was really fucking funny to see that. Like straight up. Like that was really funny. If the Pope came like dripped out and like all the fucking like Vatican shit from like the 1400s that got repossessed from people that originally owned it. But like the church killed all of them. Like just like having all of that shit on. Like, straight up coming out there, all the achievements, bro, like, the legacy achievements, like, the FOMO shit, yeah. It'd be a look. But why don't we see the uber rich in these designer brands? I think it's because they don't need to prove they're rich. We know- uh, Actually, the, the, there's a little bit of a, a clarity to this. Uh, I think Mark Zuckerberg talked about this, and he said that the reason why he wears the same shit every day is so he doesn't have decision fatigue of having to decide to do different things. So that's actually the reason why at least Mark Zuckerberg does it. Uh, for yeah, it's efficiency. Yeah, he's min maxing. So yeah, I, I mean like this. That, that's actually the reason why him and a couple of other people had said why. But I, I I don't know about every single one of them. But he is yeah he is a reptile. So like it's gonna be different for him than it would be for other people. Oh, and I think that's what designer brands are really selling. They're selling conspicuous consumption, AKA Absolutely. the spending and consumption of luxuries in an attempt to enhance one's prestige. Basically, they're selling you a costume so you can pretend to look rich. Mm -hmm. Except that isn't typically what rich people actually look like. If anything, designer brands can have the opposite effect and make people think you're desperately trying to fit in with the rich. Maybe this is a bit hard. I don't think that anybody thinks that except for people that don't have it and people that are really successful. So, like, they might say that, but the truth is that a lot of the people that say that just say that because they want it, you know, they, they want it, but they don't have it. But it kind of feels like this neon sign that true. says, I'm overcompensating. I don't really belong with the wealthy. How can Yeah, that's like, a, bro, you know what a good example of that is? Loud cars. Like, there's like a fucking inverse paradox relationship that the louder your car is the dumber you are and if you have a really loud car you're a fucking idiot we tell when someone is pretending to be rich when someone is a stereotype or almost like a caricature of a rich person oh, really? the brands they wear oh, wow. perhaps the brands they show on display when you are trying too hard and that's usually a so big Emmer, giveaway yeah, I'm talking when about someone her. is just faking it because they're trying to overcompensate for something that is not really there. Uh -huh. And actually, in a study conducted by the American Affluence Research Center and analyzed by Unity Marketing, more than 300 consumers with a minimum net worth of $800,000 were surveyed. And they found that many wealthy shoppers consider certain- Well, a minimum net worth of $800,000? That means they own a house in Austin. Like, I I'm gonna have to, like, this is, I guess this was like three years ago. Bro, it is nuts. Like, I went and I saw the way fucking houses, because I was going to buy a house. There's a, a house nearby. It went on sale. I'm like, oh, bro, I'm going to buy this, like, 100%. That shit was a million dollars. Oh, my God. It's Yeah, it's half a house in California. Luxury brands overrated, including Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Hermes, Prada, and Rolex. When I think about what it means to be rich, I think about the phrase millionaire next door. Oh there are nearly God. 22 million millionaires in the US, and I bet many of them you would never know are millionaires. Who cares? Chances are one of them might be your next door neighbor. Unassuming, driving a Kia, shopping at Costco and TJ Maxx, they're not trying to be flashy. They're not out buying the most expensive version of everything because they understand the value of money, the value you being frugal and making more than you spend. Basically, the caricature of the millionaire that we've grown up seeing on TV and now on social media is one that requires $100,000 watches and jet setting and designer brand. Well, the, the thing is that the reason why guys have private jets is because they need to go places with that jet to do business. Like most of the people that have private jets, 
There's like a, a functional efficiency reason for this. Like I've seen interviews with guys and, and they're in like a private jet and this dude is wearing flip flops and like a hoodie with like sweatpants on. It's not about showing off. You just need to get somewhere. The outfits, but that's not realistic. It's just flashiness. And you might say, hey, but all these celebrities and influencers I see, they're always wearing designer. Yeah, and because they're getting fucking paid for that shit. That's why they, every single time it's like, oh, this is a partnership with Gucci. This is a partnership with Louis Vuitton. They're all, they're getting partnered. They get it for free. People pay them to wear the stuff so they can make, it. this is the thing is they pay and also it's free too yeah that's what i said if balenciaga wants to send me some free shit now if it is not comfortable i'm not gonna wear it but if it is comfortable i would wear it that'd be fine but they send it to people because they want them to wear it so people that want to be like a celebrity wear it it's that simple it's free real estate there you go it's a hashtag ad they're totally rich and you're right Dua Lipa wears a lot of Versace, Billie Eilish wears a lot of Gucci, Kim wears a lot of Balenciaga. She should probably cut that partnership though. Oh, oh. She's trying to support her husband, her ex-husband, Kanye. That's why she wore this. She's trying to support him. Show solidarity. Many of us are first exposed to the designer world through our favorite celebrities. But what we don't see is that behind the scenes, these influencers and celebrities get sent so many free products yeah. from designer brands too, because they know that it's free marketing if that celebrity or influencer is pictured, wearing, or holding exactly, yeah. that item. And some celebrities, like the ones it's called just marketing. Met, have official ambassadorship partnerships with these designer brands True. where they're paid to constantly wear their stuff. Mm -hmm. Because of all this, there's this illusion that designer brand items equate wealth and coolness. Yeah. It feeds straight into our cycle. It, it, just, it, gets, it gets naive people to do it. Naive people that see that, uh, there you go. And they get excited for it, and it's like, okay, great. Well, I, this is what all the rich people do. This is what all the cool people do, so I need to do this too. Asmon and Gucci win. If Gucci sends me a pair of shoes, and they're better than the Tetris shoes that Twitch sent me five years ago, I will wear the Gucci shoes. I don't care. Logical to, to be fair, though, I would not wear them to a lot of places because I don't want people to fucking try to talk to me or interact with me because I'm wearing nice clothes. That is the last thing I want to deal with. Desire or to rob fit in me. and yeah, be I don't part of money, an exclusive yeah. club, especially one where our peers are our rich They're and famous it. idols. It preys on insecurity, and unfortunately, the people it most vulnerable people to People are so insecure. They are crazy amounts of insecure. It's sad. Kind of messaging and insecurity are middle class and lower class folks. There you go. I saved change over a year, and I was able to buy the bag of my dreams. So you would be surprised at how much. Save how I afford luxury tips and tricks to afford your dream bag. Here's a tip: make more money. You're not making enough money to buy the thing you want. Make more money. Stop thinking about the bag. Think about how to make more money. Because how much you want to bet? The people that think all the time about the kind of bag they want are thinking about that, not making more money. That's all they're doing, thinking about thinking about a bag. You think about the money, then you get the bag. Literally and metaphorically. I mean, change can do for you. This video I found the, the people bag, waiting in line for Supreme oh, launch was like especially that. interesting to me because I think it nicely juxtaposed these high ticket items with the low earning buyers pretty well. I go to college, so I can't afford the CDG collab. I go to school. So how do you have money to buy this? I collect my parents' allowance. Well, also- There it is, mom pays for it. There it is, yeah, absolutely. And you, you know, like dad working in the coal mine comes home, son's wearing a $250 t-shirt that says supreme on it so he's gonna drop out of school to be a soundcloud rapper he's gonna be famous on tiktok showing the allure that just the designer name alone had for these people is it worth it uh, yeah it's worth every dime because it's supreme 
Because of <laughs> duh, <laughs> bro, duh. <laughs> like obviously, <laughs> what do you mean? No shit is worth it's supreme. Supreme. Another thing I think about is this viral story about a woman who took her mom on a Dior shopping spree after her mom was treated poorly at a Dior store. According to the daughter, the mom had been ignored by a Dior sales rep because the mom was dressed poor. Which you'd think, like, uh -huh. if a store was treating my mom that way, we wouldn't go there. How rude. But instead, it kind of had the opposite effect. They went back there and they purchased a lot of stuff. And just looking quickly at some of what the- What a waste of money. What if they were just busy and, and the mom took it personally? And like, so the store just makes a bunch of money for something that didn't happen. Do our products online? I know that shopping spree. That's a $4,000 a earring for $2,800. Is that even yellow gold? Whoa, and so look at that, bro. It's not even like they don't, you don't even get the whole thing. What is it? Is the bottom part DLC? For that, yeah. Cost multiple thousands of dollars. Like this one Dior bag costs as much as some cars and house down payments. That was no chump ch uh, Again, I live in Austin, but okay. Change. What's interesting is that this rudeness the mom experienced is an alleged technique designer brands use to boost sales. Sales staff rudeness causes what's known as the pretty woman effect, which is referenced- Yeah, cause you want, you, you want to be taken seriously. You want people to like you saying the Julia Roberts movie Pretty Woman where she goes and buys a ton of luxury goods after being dismissed by one of the sales reps. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Solder marketing professor Darren Dahl. What? That's crazy. People are that stupid. That's not, I can't believe that. How people buy into that? I should make one of these luxury stores. This is smart. I feel like every time I see how dumb people are, it doesn't make me feel bad for humanity. It makes me feel stupid for not taking advantage of it. Fragrance by Zach? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Who researched this effect explains that designer brand sales reps, quote, can end up having a similar effect to an in-group in high school that others aspire to join. Uh -huh. For the study That's right, because again, all the people that care about this shit, their mind is still in high school. That's right. That's that that's actually so fucking that is so eye-opening. Yeah, because that's what they're trying to do. These are people, they're like 36 years old, still trying to fucking overcome the fact that they didn't get asked to homecoming dance in 11th grade. Participants imagined or had- Their peak? Well, it is their peak, and they weren't even that high then either. Interactions with sales representatives, rude or not. They then rated their feelings about associated brands and their desire to own them. After being treated poorly, participants who expressed an aspiration to be associated with high-end brands reported an increased desire to own the luxury product. Yep. Designer brands attempt to hijack our psychological desire to fit in and display status. Sad. We want to be seen as the richest person in the room, the richest amongst our friends, the richest person oh at work. God. The problem is, there's always going to be someone richer. It's always going to be always someone- somebody that's in a better position that you are. One thing I've learned about people that are in a better position than me, a lot of them, whenever I know more about them, I realize I don't want to be in that fucking position. That sounds really bad. That's awful. With more money, more bags, more designer things, more whatever. Even Elon Musk, who was the richest man in the world for uh -huh. a while, he's down $200 billion. There's always going to be someone else. And even if he still was at the top, there's a ton of other metrics that he'll never be the top of because there's always yep. just going to be someone else. Because that's life. There's always going to be someone with some other superlative that you don't have. And it's really easy to get caught in this cycle of chasing. And it's, also, ba it's also vice versa. Like there's always going to be things that you have that other people well that reminds me of that kanye thing remember that whenever he put like the swastika and the star of david together it reminds me of that. that's the first thing i think of whenever i see that middle design there yeah look at that 
status symbols like designer handbags or luxury cars. But this cycle of chasing will leave or keep. That's only two hundred and seventy thousand like dollars. That's what it says right here. Or luxury cars. That's a nice car. This is a two hundred and seventy thousand dollar car, bro. There are cars like I, uh, I, my dad. I think he wanted me to go to the the Lamborghini dealership with him and uh, or like the Ferrari dealership because there's there's now there's one in Austin. It, it's it's one of those things. I do not want to fucking go to one of those. Yeah, I, I do not. SQC car? That's a nice fucking car, right? It's an amazing car. But like, he didn't buy it because of the money. He bought it because he liked that car. Get a Tesla? I don't know. This cycle of chasing will leave or keep most people poor. When you're caught in the cycle, your time isn't your own. It's owned by the drug of buying manufactured yeah. status, which is paid for by the hours of your life at a job. The way I think about it is the more designer items you buy, or really anything that you buy, the more of your life you're trading away. Obviously, yeah. we have to spend money to survive, but the level of excess that designer brands promote is not essential to live. I argue instead, it actually robs us the chance to truly live. For myself- Well, it's people that spend their whole life, like I, I realize this is some fucking crazy shit that people are in, but they are on one with this. People wake up in the morning and they're pissed off because they didn't get enough sleep. And they drive to work, and the drive sucks, driving a car that they hate. They get to work, they hate their fucking job. They go home, their wife pisses them off, their girlfriend is annoying. They get on the computer, and they watch videos about things that make them mad, and they play video games that they stopped liking six years ago. And they stay up late doing that? just to go to bed to wake up the next day to do the exact same thing and i wonder like why are you alive what are you doing with your life where is the upside here is this the beginning of the matrix what the fuck are you doing when is it gonna end it's scary I think a lot about intentional living. This is where you're aware of what your personal values and beliefs are, and you try to actively make decisions that align with those values and beliefs. It's the reason I personally don't buy designer goods because the values don't align with my values, and I think that I don't buy them because they're expensive. Like, if what the hell are you talking about? A value? Like, I don't give a fuck about the value of the goddamn company. Like, I don't care, man. If it's expensive, I ain't gonna buy it because it's a lot of money. Is it probably not that comfortable? Time and money could That's be spent it. better elsewhere. And one of the values. I'm gonna tell you one value right now. You're gonna make YouTube videos. She should get one of these mics. Like, this is a better mic, I would say. That's a Blue Yeti. Those aren't as good. <laughs> doesn't align with mine is that of the designer industry's wastefulness. This is what Coach's dumpster looks like, and they slash everything up. They slash them up so People you can, can I guess, yeah. resell them or try to return them or something for money. It completely trash their merchandise. Okay. Many designer brands are notorious for intentionally destroying their extra product. Coach was called out for it after that video that you just saw, and in 2018, Burberry was called out for incinerating their unsold products. This is a very widespread problem. I don't really think this is that big of a deal, personally. Uh, it's their stuff. They can do what they want with it. But yeah, I mean, it is a waste. It definitely is a waste. Practice throughout the fashion industry it doesn't just affect luxury houses it also affects the high street in fact we had h&m you know doing something similar quite recently it is you know the result for me of years and years of mass production and to a certain extent somebody could have eaten that bag that's true there's a starving family out there could have eaten that uh bro that pair of shoes they could have eaten that raw materials aren't infinite yeah, but like all I'm saying is I don't I don't like going down the path uh, of what is and is not acceptable to do with like uh, something that you you own legitimately. I think that if you own something, you own the autonomy to decide what you want to do with it. Now, somebody can say it's stupid, and it is stupid, but in their perspective, like I see where they're coming from. 
Because if you have the if you give this to Salvation Army, and then they got a hobo walking around with a Gucci suit on, people are gonna see that and then they'll wanna buy one. So it's like I get it. I definitely get it. It's like whatever you know, like in wow, where like they make an achievement easy and then nobody cares about it anymore. I get it. An industry that is profoundly inefficient. It's a big problem. It, that uh, I don't think inefficient is the word. But has okay, sure, I, backlash, I get what you're saying. Which is understandable With because it's drink, kind of wild yeah. to think about products, yeah. perfectly good products being ripped up or burnt simply to keep other people away from it. That's it's right. It's very much giving Well, it's not other people. It's poor people away from it. That's what they don't want to deal with because they give it to other rich people to be fine, but they don't want to have poor people to have it, uh, and anything like that. That's what it is. You're saying this because you because uh, you sell clothes. Uh, why would we throw away our clothes? Yeah, I don't understand. Why why would I throw away the why would I? What do you think? Buying an OTK hoodie is a fucking status symbol. It's a hoodie to support the org. Like, I, I mean, maybe at TwitchCon it could be, but besides that, ain't nobody going to know what the fuck it is. You, you think you're going to buy that bald hat that I made? It's a balding statement? That's okay. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Yeah, we don't do that shit. Give us the same shirt. Make one of these. I could make you, you know what I should do? I should make a plain white t-shirt and then sell it for a hundred dollars. Poker in the dark night causing chaos. But I think this practice nicely captures the combined wastefulness and illusion of scarcity that defines the designer world. Yeah. From an environmental standpoint, the fashion industry is a menace to our planet. And I remember I had this, uh, uh, I'll just tell y'all, uh, Izzy had this friend that took everybody's rent money and she bought a six hundred, sorry, six thousand dollar Louis Vuitton bag with it. She stole everybody's rent money and just bought this bag with it. <laughs> that shit was fucking funny to me. Oh my god. I know that sounds dramatic. It kind of blew my mind to learn about how wait, wait, wait. menace to our planet. And I know that sounds dramatic. It kind of blew my mind to learn okay. about how awful the fashion industry was when I first learned about its impact. But listen to this. This is from a Bloomberg article. The global glut of clothing is an environmental crisis. Quote, fashion accounts for up to 10% of global carbon dioxide output. That's a lot. More than international flights and shipping combined, according to the United Nations Environment Program. It's the second most... I think this is a bit deceptive. Uh, I, I don't think this is a very strong point because are we talking fashion industry? We're we talking textiles because like, this is counting JC Penney or is this just like Versace and Gucci? Because I'm pretty sure they're talking about everything, not just luxury goods. And like luxury goods, this is like a 1% of a 1%. You see what I'm saying? Like, most people are buying dungarees at Walmart. They're buying the, the Mario movie shirt at Walmart. Cheap goods are 99%, yeah. Polluting industry behind oil. Oil, which is oil, you know? I wanna be clear, not all of that waste is from designer brands alone. I actually think the larger culprits are fast. You know, if I ever got a collaboration, I actually read something, uh, Asmon by Balenciaga. If I ever had a collaboration with them, I would try to make all of the clothes that I made with them have as many references to conspiracy theories and Satanism as possible. I would make it to where, like, there were, like, a tons of, like, 4chan threads about it, like, trying to dissect it, like, just to make it, just to fucking freak people out. Yeah, the shirt is, why? Because it'd be fucking funny. That's why. 
fashion places like Shein and Uniqlo uh, because they just promote hyper overconsumption and hyper over disposal and really short trend cycles. And actually the fashion industry could probably take a few lessons from designer brands in the idea of trying to build things that are gonna be more long lasting and yeah. higher quality so that you're not constantly having to go. To be fair, most people don't even use these things. They, they have like a Chanel bag and then they use the one that comes from Target 90% of the time. That's why they don't get fucked up. Another reason is because they don't use them. Go buy new things. That being said, designer brands don't get away scot-free here. Sure, uh -huh. they might not be following the increasingly short trend cycles of TikTok where styles go out of fashion within weeks, but designer brands still pump out new trends uh. throughout the seasons, effectively adding to the culture of overconsumption as people try to follow the latest styles. This type of overconsumption not Jesus. only hurts our planet, but also our wallets. If you want to hear more about that topic, be sure to check out my other video, How Consumerism Ruins Our Planet and Finances. Stop buying Beyond fueling like overconsumption, that. the materials that smart. luxury brands use have a major impact. You've got some brands using animal parts like skins and teeth to create their products, which raise- Well, leave him alone. Just let him sit there. Don't leave him alone. He doesn't- Now, I, I will say also- this is, uh, I'm gonna be, I don't give a fuck if people want, if people want to go kill an animal to make it into a bag, hey, that's fine with me, but just don't kill too many of them because then it's like, it's going to mess up the environment and shit. There's a limit. Yeah, there's a limit. Especially, I mean, this is like a rare, this is like a rare spawn. Like, bro, we gonna, we, like, don't kill the rare spawns. This is, this is, you know what it's like? It's like somebody that goes and they kill one of the rare spawn, uh, hunter pets and wow, instead of taming it. It's just fucked up to do that. It's a shiny, yeah. It drops a rare transmog? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like, I mean, at least let him live his life for the most of it, you know? People can enjoy the animal. Their own ethical questions, and you've also got the environmental impact of creating the raw materials used for the products. Things like cotton growing, cattle farming, mining, all of these are incredibly energy intensive. Very true, but the, the, the this fucking Gucci shit and Balenciaga, fucking Louis Vuitton, like this is like 1% of that, probably less than that. Like, let's contextualize this. It's really not because of the, the, that specifically. With Caring, the company that owns Gucci and YSL, less, yeah, finding yeah. that 75% of its environmental impact was from raw material production and processing alone. Now, I know those are a lot of facts and figures about environmental impact, and you might be like, hey, this video is supposed to be about money and how these brands keep me poor. But I think that wastefulness is an inherent part of the conversation because there is a link between climate change and poverty and the worse that climate change gets the worse the divide between the rich and poor gets speaking of I rich and poor that. let's talk about the opportunity cost of buying designer brands aka how rich could you be if you didn't buy designer brands? it's true i don't know if it's true or not like i i, I like I could see how you could make an argument for that in like an abstract, but like I, I, the sun made me poor. She lost me there. I mean, I, I'm willing to read evidence for it. It's not something that I would write on. Like somebody goes, they tell me the earth is flat. And I'm like, nope, that's in the garbage. This one's not in the garbage, but I'm holding it over the garbage. Force agenda. Bro, I'm gonna be real. Like I am a, uh, I'm a climate change believer. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I really apologize. But you light a cigarette in the house, it's gonna make the house smell like a cigarette. You have a barbecue, people smell it from the other, uh, other street. Cities can get pollution. People live in these fucking Chinese cities. It's like smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. They're wearing masks like it was COVID ten years ago. You're going to tell me that in every other circumstance, small-scale pollution can exist, but the idea that large-scale pollution cannot exist is insane.
Absolutely fucking not. Are they right about the scale of it? I don't know. But I think to write it off is silly. It's illogical. Let's crunch some numbers. How much money would you a have? A popular defense of buy. Let's crunch this? some numbers. If you didn't buy designer, okay. A popular more. defense you of buying designer items is that they're investment pieces. For some, that means that they'll last a long time rather than just being thrown away within the year. Probably yeah, because you're holding on to it, man. Talk about shit that lasts a long time. I'll let y'all know one thing. Let's see, what do I got right here? Uh, this this monitor y'all are on, like right here. You, I'm gonna I'm look. See, that, that's you guys right here. Um, you guys got, I, I had this monitor in 2010. I got this monitor. These lights right here. Let me see. Can I show you guys right there? Yeah, those lights. I got this at Sam's Club. My mom bought this for me. I was like 16 years old, 15 years old, 2005. Uh, this desk was 2017. Um, that desk is 2004. That chair is 2004. That futon I got the side of the road, so it's probably from the 90s. Like, if you don't fuck shit up, it's gonna last. Like, oh, I got one right here. Take a look at this. I wanna talk about some shit to get a get. What about a Gucci blanket, bro? Fuck that Gucci blanket shit. We got a, this is a Legend of Zelda original. Look at this right here. Let's see if I can find this. Y'all can see it here. Where, where we at? Legend of Zelda. This is a uh, blanket literally from the 90s, man. Like, I've had this my whole life. And you know what? It smells like shit. But I just put it in the washer and it'll be fine. That's my blanket. Oh. Am I screaming for the end? Yeah, the end ain't coming because that's mine. Well, Joe's having that blanket and anything else. Bro, I got a lot. I got a lot of really cool stuff, man. Uh, I got so much cool stuff downstairs. So yeah, see an ultraviolet light, please. Nah, bro. Like your eye, you go blind from how bright it would be. Um, but yeah, the chair looks like it lasts a long time. Brand is that? Oh, the razor chair? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, this chair lasts a while, huh? Damn. But no, I mean, like I, I, I think most things you take care of them, you don't fuck them around, and it's gonna be fine. Like I have a car. It's a 2001 Mustang. And it's good. It's a nice car. I'm not looking to get a new car. It's great. Probably have stains from 2005 in your room. Bro, I got a cup from Wendy's from 2005 in my room. True, but I would argue you don't have to spend designer brand prices There's to get something ones. that's higher quality. There's a lot of other options out there that are a little more affordable. But the other way that's that people- That's silly because like you buy something that's expensive last 10 years but you spend 10 times as much on it. But you can buy a piece of shit once every two years that's like one-tenth the price. So if you're trying to min-max, it's actually better to buy a piece of shit every once in a while than buy a really good thing once. Like after, look at this shirt, for example. Like this shirt came out of a pack of six shirts just like this shirt. Is this a nice shirt? Nah, bro, but whenever I fucking, whenever I'm done with this shirt, and it gets torn up. It's like, who gives a fuck? And just get another one. Who cares? It's freedom, man. Not be attached to bullshit. I mean, investment piece is literally as an investment. It's something that they can buy one day and then resell later on and make a profit from. Yeah. This is a very popular argument for our Bro, friend. you only get that like for cars. People do this. They think this is for cars. Bro, you have to be dropping probably 400 to 600 minimum, 400,000 on a car for it to appreciate in value. And then on top of that, you have to keep it in tip top condition. You have to like not drive it around all the time, bro. Yeah, right. Like we're in a weird situation. Somebody says not true. Like we're in a weird situation. We have been recently with cars because of that whole chip shortage thing and a couple of other things. Sure. But like, that's a, that's like a, a fucking, uh, that's like a secondary uh, variable. That's got nothing to do with it.
friend, the Birkin bag. I have been collecting these bags for a minute. They're also a great investment. According to Time Magazine yeah. in 2016, quote, the Birkin bag outpaced both the stock market and the price of gold in the last 35 years, a time period chosen to reflect the date when Birkin bags were first produced in 1981. Okay. They say that the annual return on a Birkin was 14.2% compared to the S&P average of 8.7% a year and gold's negative 1.5%. But there's a few problems with this logic. First being, like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, the price tag on the Birkin bag is not the only thing that you're going to be paying. You have to have a purchasing history with Hermes, so you have to include that in what you're investing. And since you're sure, using this as true. an investment piece, point. you're probably going to want to take insurance out on it. That's going to cost you. Bro, a pretty you get insurance on a bag. The only reason I have car insurance is because the fucking state tells me I need it. Insurance on a bag like, oh, my God. I have insurance on my watches. You know, you have a clock on your phone, right? Like, you, you know that, right? Have you looked at it before? Penny as well. It's weird to think about how fragile an investment something like a Birkin bag or a designer phones? product is, especially when you compare it to more traditional investment like mm -hmm. stocks. Like, yeah. spill your coffee in it, have your dog get a little too curious, exactly. and suddenly you have lost thousands of dollars. Exactly. In because the true freedom, the, the like true wealth is freedom in my opinion. And the freedom to not give a fuck is the best thing ever. To know, like, oh, something gets messed up? Fuck it. Throw it away, get something else. Who cares? God, that feels fucking good. Never worry about shit like that. That is, that is the only thing I like, man. Yeah, n never want to worry about any of that bullshit. You can use a watch as a compass. Do you have Google Maps? I tell you one thing is a compass is not going to be on top of a satellite. You, you ever seen Google Maps? You got some crazy shit on these phones nowadays, man. Hey, look. They can do some crazy stuff. Resell value? Can't say that ever happens to me with my stock portfolio. So before we end, I thought it'd be really interesting to crunch some numbers to see how rich you could be if you didn't buy a designer bag and you instead invested in something like a low cost index fund, which is one of my personal favorites. So let's say you have $3,500 okay. in disposable income, which is the money that you have left over after taxes and you paying essentials. Sure. In choice A, you decide to splurge on a $3,500. Well, well, we have a choice. Like what about choice board ape yacht club? I hope we have this one included because, like, I mean, obviously you can't just, yeah, I mean, let's go. Like, where's a board Ape Yacht Club? Like, you got to probably be a billionaire by now. To Design the moon. your bag like this one from Louis Vuitton. In choice B, you decide to buy a nice quality purse from somewhere like TJ Maxx, and you put the remaining okay. $3,450 in a brokerage account that invests into the S&P 500. Now, jumping 10 years ahead, let's say that you can sell that Louis Vuitton bag for $3,500. I'm putting that in there because I don't feel like it's a level where you could sell it for more. And also, if you're actually using the, the bag... The ones that sell for more are only like specific ones. And usually the ones that appreciate in value are the super fucking expensive ones. It's not like just the run-of-the-mill ones sell for a lot and they resale high. It's only the shinies. Yeah, it's only the the rare spawn bags where they only made so these bags were made basically uh you know Balenciaga paid um uh Blackwater to go into a <laughs> endangered species <laughs> fucking encampment in, in a, a a fucking impoverished impoverished African nat nation and kill all of the white tigers. And so each of these bags is worth like five thousand five hundred thousand dollars. And yes, maybe that one will make more money, but all of the other ones will not. Like your four thousand dollar fucking bottom of the barrel Gucci bag is not gonna sell for more money. 
It's just not. Like that's it doesn't go that way. It, it's only the expensive ones. There's probably going to be a level of wear and tear. Yeah. We're going to be generous and say you were able to sell it for you. Yeah, these. so everybody, this is a wear and tear. Think about this fucking shit. People talk about, oh, this is how much it's going to be if it's PSA 10. Bro, Miz sent that shit in and he opened that straight out the box. And it was a PSA 8.5 or a PSA 9. Getting a PSA 10 is hard. Because it's, it's RNG. exact it's rigged, yeah. that you bought it profit being zero dollars looking at choice b though and using the s p 500's historical average of 11.8 percent growth your 3450 dollars has now become ten thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars that's a seven thousand seventy five dollar increase if you're paid the national average of twenty eight dollars and ten cents an hour and you work 40 hours a week that growth equals six and a half wait the average is twenty eight dollars that's probably that's the average not the mean or that that's the not the median right like there's no fucking shot that half of the jobs in the u.s pay more than twenty eight dollars that's a no shot situation like that's getting that bro that's getting inflated like a motherfucker by like some uh a lawyer that's charging two thousand dollars an hour there's no way if that's average i'm getting scammed yeah weeks of your working life. That's a month and a half earlier that you could retire and live the life of your dreams. And if Choice A continues to buy designer products throughout their life, the gap between their life and the wealth they could be building is going to continue to grow. And yeah, but you, she, this girl is stupid because she forgot the most important thing. These girls are not going to be able to post a picture on Instagram that gets 40 likes from people that don't like them, uh, secretly don't like them on their Instagram profile. So she just totally forgot about that whole factor. Yeah, they're not going to get 40 likes on Instagram for a picture of a stupid fucking bag. For some people, that might be totally, totally worth it. And that's fine. Yeah. The social signaling and the enjoyment that they get from having designer products might be worth more than that extra time. Not. Oh, I agree. If you like buying designer shit, buy it. The thing is, this, this is what I said before, right? It's like, you got one life to live. Don't let some fucking, some girl on the internet, some fucking baldy on the internet tell you what to do with your money. If you want to buy Gucci and you want to buy Supreme, you want to look fresh to death. You want to be dripped out, do it. If it makes you happy. Never let anybody tell you that you can't do what makes you happy, unless it's illegal. And even some of those are probably fine. It's just, you know, laws are stupid. But most of those probably not that good. Uh, other than that, let people do whatever they want to do. Yeah, but make sure that it makes you actually happy. Working or building up wealth. Despite all my personal opinions, people can and will choose what they want to spend their time and money on. But what I hope this thought experiment and this video overall can do is to help us think a little bit differently about designer brands and how we spend our money. Money is time, and I think it's always a good idea to reflect on how we are spending both of them. So what do you think? Have you bought designer before and did you feel like it was worth the high price tag or not really? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be really curious to hear. And also let me know if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover next. If you want to see more, be sure to check out my other video essays like this one on influencer culture or this one on the stay-at-home girlfriend trend. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to please the algorithm lords, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. I will say that, um, you know, like as a, I, I'm very much a traditionalist guy. Uh, I have no problem with a stay-at-home girlfriend, stay-at-home wife. That's what I would expect to do. If I had a girlfriend or a wife, she was having kids with her, obviously she could stay home. If she did, if she wanted to, I wouldn't be like, you know, I wouldn't lock her in the house, right? But, like, that would be a lifestyle that I think is probably good, right? I mean, I think that's just, uh, you know, my mom was home a lot. She had a lot of time to spend with not just me, but, you know, Cody, Jeff, Zach, Cameron, Lowell, AJ, fucking everybody, Sean, Dylan, the other fucking AJ. Like, uh, all of us, like, right? And, and so, like, we grew up like that, and it was great. We were so lucky to have her. And, uh, you know, like, that that's the way I see it. So I got no problem with that if, uh, you know, a girl wanted to work or whatever. But, uh, you know, I'm very much a traditionalist kind of guy. And, uh, you know, I, I think stay-at-home wife, stay-at-home girlfriend's totally fine. But, you know, people might not look at it that way. It's all about consent.
That's what it's about. It's about a consent. But either way, I'm going to turn into Greek. Bro, you think I'm going to let her cook me up a fish? You think I'm going to let her cook me up a fish when there's steak in the world? No, I don't want to I don't want to catch a fish. I catch a fish, maybe throw it back in the water. It could be fun to do, but I ain't going to eat it. No. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is a great video. I really like this video. I'm going to subscribe to her. Maybe watch another one of these. Uh, this is good. I was actually impressed by uh, by how good this was. I think there were a couple of the things, like with the textile industry, it doesn't really have to do with luxury brands. Luxury brands are like 0.1% of that. But, uh, you know, it, I mean, I think they're all wasteful to an extent. Yeah, swordfish, you got to try it. Why? What if I get hurt? It's literally in the name. It's a swordfish. I, you, why would I eat a sword? Uh, once my sister told me when you're buying something, you're not spending money, you're spending time, and all the time it takes you to work to earn that amount. Yeah, true. A better option would be buy a bag from a local craftsman. It supports the community, and you can directly trace its origin, one of a kind, not to mention it will cost a lot less. Yeah, but can you post a picture of that on Instagram? This guy has no idea what he's talking about. It's dangerous to think that you're immune from FOMO just because you don't like designer brands. There's always something else that will grab you and give you that feeling. There's nothing wrong with being involved with FOMO. FOMO is fine. The problem is the emptiness that it creates. So, like, if you buy a Supreme shirt and you're actually happy, then I think it's fine. So, like, I'll give you an example, right? So, like, I played World of Warcraft a long time. I put 15, uh, like, probably $35,000 into that game. Right, I was going to say how many days, but like I put 35,000 hours, hours, hours into that game. Let's say half of that's AFK, because it probably was. But let's say 20,000 wasn't, somewhere around there. I don't think I spent, I wasted a single hour because I was doing something that I enjoyed and it made me happy. That's it. I don't regret that for a second. I had so much fun playing games like this. It was great. It was so fucking fun. Talking about being delusional. You literally can't, like, this is a perspective. This is a subjective evaluation. Let's see here. My dad really falls for the uh, whole salesperson treating you poor technique. Oh, my God. That is so weird. What she said about pretty woman effect is so true. Yeah, people that want to prove it to everybody else. God, man, if you got to prove something to the world, the world's already won. That's what I think. I was obsessed with some designer, uh, with designer stuff just in 15, 2016, uh, and then just completely stopped because it was pointless. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of that, right? Yeah, true. If the salesperson is deliberately rude, I'm leaving. Bro, I've had people, at salespeople, like, be rude to me. And, like, I don't really care because, like, I just look at this. This is like a vendor. You know, it's like a, it's like King's Honor, friend. If they say, fuck you, I'm busy. It's like, okay, so, you know, I, can I still buy something? No, like, I don't really care. It's like an NPC. I don't care what you tell me. Like, there was, like, one time some guy, like, yelled at me because I was putting in my card too early. And, like, everybody freaked out about it. And, like, the person who came over, I didn't even realize that it was a problem. I, I didn't even realize. I was like, what are y'all doing? Is, it, is, is, is my prescription ready? No? Okay, well, yeah. I mean, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's yeah, it's like, I don't... <laughs> what do you... Why would I give a fuck? <laughs> 